Hey there, this is Bram Kanstein, and you're listening to Bitcoin for Millennials. Together with my guests on this podcast, I go on a journey to discover how our current financial system works, why it's flawed, and why Bitcoin is the most relevant technology that you, my fellow millennials, should understand and adopt. In this episode, I'm delighted to welcome back Jeff Booth for another recording. He already shared some great insights in episode 10, and today we dive into a thought-provoking piece of his called The Greatest Game. This article really challenged my perceptions of the economic systems, the value of Bitcoin, and the transformative power of technology. So, uh, Jeff, welcome back. It's a pleasure to to have you on again. Yeah, thanks, Bram. How great to be here. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks uh, for for coming on again. As I mentioned, just off mic, like uh, every week, I have like two or three like pieces of content I read, or quotes from people, or tweets from people, uh, you know, in Bitcoin that. I really learn a lot from, and uh, yeah, this article was, um, yeah, just really thought thought provoking for me. And uh, I mean, I've studied like the evolution of technology and the internet, and you know, over the over the past few years. But this uh, this really blew my mind, and I think especially how you describe the evolution of innovation and the process, you know, that's behind it in in this um, in this article. And I think a lot of these thoughts come back in. In your book, The Price of Tomorrow, which of course I would, we recommend everyone everyone to read. Um, but yeah, to start, I wanted to share a a quote from Buckminster Fuller that that you start the article with, and then ask you uh, a question. So the quote goes: "You never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete." Can you share a bit on how Bitcoin represents such a new model in in the financial world? Yeah, and and this is obviously uh, it, it's, it's it's really easy, but it's it's hard to understand because we uh, we drag our baggage. Essentially, all of our past experiences, we drag our baggage into our for future view. And in other words, most people don't predict the future; they predict predict their present forward. Yeah, and so so in predicting the future, you have to you have to understand what has changed. And does that change impose new rules on everything else? That then, that then you have to instead of break your, and then what ends up happening? Sorry, when you, the new rules that are imposed on on all of your belief structures, most people, even once they understand it, want to drag their pre existing belief structure into the new rule. Yeah, and, and that's where that's that's what I would say is the journey of the rabbit hole is 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 what you just described in yourself is you keep getting surprised and you realize it's deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's not anything that Bitcoin's doing. It's what it's doing is imposing a new, a new structure on the world. And your beliefs are now starting to realize they're incompatible with your former beliefs. And for people that can do that, they go deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole and they understand what this means. And it's so profound. Um, it's so profound a change in the world. It's just hard, hard to even articulate what that means. Um, and that's why you, you hear me say a couple of statements, uh, over and over and over again, trying to get people to, to realize kind of what's ha what's happening. So one of those statements is, <clears throat> is, um, the natural state of a free market is deflation. Yeah. So, so now Unless you can prove that statement wrong, and you can't, because prices fall to the marginal cost of production, then anything and anything that's ever come before it is uh, anything, any system, any political system, any economic system, is essentially a control system disguised as a free market, right? Because then, if the natural state of the free market is deflation, it means every year prices should fall for all of humanity. Yeah, and so so you almost have to start there, and you have to say, is that true? And if it is true, then why isn't it true in the world we live in? So yeah, um, because and that's where that's why these are incompatible together. And what ends up happening throughout time is now now going where it ties into Bitcoin. Also true is this: if we have an open, decentralized, and secure monetary network or, or open, decentralized, secure protocol bounded by energy and creating energy abundance as it as it scales then and if that statement is true you, you should you should do your work to see if it's true if it is truly decentralized and secure and it gets more decentralized and secure all the time and it 
drives to lower cost energy and provides um, uh, energy abundance, then 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 it's also the first time in history we've ever had that. Hey there, thanks so much for listening to this episode. I just really want to ask you for a quick favor. Over the last few months, I've seen that only 75% of people who listen to this podcast or watch it on YouTube are actually subscribed. The most important thing I'm currently focusing on next to hopefully giving you interesting conversations is growing this podcast subscriber base so I can continue with it into the future. I want to thank everyone who has been viewing and listening to Bitcoin for Millennials, leaving comments here and sending me DMs. It's been super, super motivating. So thank you so much. So I really want to ask you to please hit the subscribe button on YouTube or follow me on your favorite podcasting app if you are enjoying this podcast. Thanks again for joining me on this journey. Now back to the conversation. Yeah, but so that I think for people, is it's like a double thing, right? Like the, so, the first. So, yeah. Go right. Ahead. Like the first thing is, is, as you mentioned, some people can actually, you know, go down the rabbit hole, not only in the content of what they're learning, but also inside themselves in a sense. Right. Like every time that through just a rational approach, you discover new knowledge, which conflicts with what you've learned or how you think, you know, yeah. something works. Well, then you can decide to uh, adopt that new knowledge and change your beliefs, or you can fight it, right? I mean, we see that a lot, of course, in That's what we see. Twitter and like how yep. uh, just recently uh, today I saw a video of Natalie Brunel with like two apparently well-known people with a big following in like finance, and they get so emotional when they talk about their arguments against Bitcoin, right? So I, th I think that's like one thing, right? Like the the personal journey in a sense, and that you can actually challenge your beliefs, and that it also kind of fulfills you that it's fun for you, right? That curiosity and, and these new things. And then you have that second thing, as you mentioned, you know, this is one of the things I try to, uh, how, how I approach when I uh, approach it, when I talk with people about Bitcoin is like, why do we joke about the bread being 30 cents uh, 50 years ago, right? And it's now $4 yeah. or 4 euros. Like, does that make sense to you? And then people say, of course not, you know, and then I kind of go into that corner, but it's such a paradigm uh, shift, it's right? A, so it's, for, it's, it's for a sure. double it's challenge. A, it's a huge double challenge because we've never we've never seen this before. It means what Bitcoin represents is yeah. something that no history book has ever seen before. Yeah. Right. And and it, and you can first go: Is that true? Is it decentralized and secure? Can it be attacked? And you could believe yeah. that because everything else has always been centralized or gamed gold has been centralized and gamed and repriced or manipulated yeah. still is today you could believe that bitcoin um is going to be right you could yeah. but but that's why that's why a belief that it is going to be then requires you to say how hmm. right yeah and, and how is it going to be attacked because it because the evidence as it gets stronger and deep more decentralized and more secure every year and that, yep. um, so, so the evidence gains and everything else on, on Bitcoin. And I've gone through, I tried to counter my own argument here and said, how would I attack it? All of the different things. And I'm not saying, and I don't take that lightly because I realize the system we live in must steal money at an ever increasing rate. And it's all humans have ever known. And their political systems are tied to it. So the, all the political systems, whether you're libertarian, um, Marxist, uh, totalitarian, capitalist, all of them are tied to a belief structure that steals money. Yep. It's a control, uh, a control structure. Um, and so if this was true, it would change a paradigm completely. And I wanted to go down to say as hard as I could to say, where would the attacks be? Where would the vectors of attacks be? Because you'd have to expect everything to come at it because there was so much to lose from the existing system. And most people would be living in the existing system, making it stronger with their actions. Yeah. And I'll give you an example of making it stronger with their actions. So, um, so today, um, a lot of people store their wealth in, say, the Magnificent Seven. So do your pension funds, you do. So the Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and NVIDIA. What do all those companies have in common? They are led by someone and <clears throat> no artificial intelligence. Oh, yeah. So, so all of those companies, essentially you use them every day because they're cheaper, because they, they give you more and more value. Hmm. Right. And if they, 
didn't run artificial intelligence and they had to increase their labor and they had to charge you more, you would use something else. Yep, so every right. day you make them stronger with all of your actions. And then worse, you put your money into those companies because it's the only way to s store your value. Because if you put them broadly in, in the S and P you're losing money because hmm. those are the only companies that are gaining value. And then and then at the same time, you say to yourself, AI is accelerating and concentrating over me, right? And I, in this control structure, and everybody's doing it, the same exact reactions, because it's the only way to, to, to essentially protect their money from being debased, because you can't put it in the bank and let it be debased. So you're trying to get more. So our actions, all of our actions combined, are making the system stronger against us. Hmm. And, and here's what's happening in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is repricing all of those companies because it doesn't care, right? So Bitcoin, if you look at those companies measured in Bitcoin, all of them are falling. Yeah. So, so as people start to understand what's happening, they're going to move more of their money to Bitcoin because it can't be debased and that system is going to get stronger. And, and it, it leaves you kind of a paradigm choice that the more effort that you spend energizing the existing system, that is really a control structure, no matter who in that control structure or what you believe in that control structure is helping you, climate change, economic systems, Biden versus Trump, versus the, all of this complete nonsense. Mm. It's all designed to keep that control structure intact. By the way, you can create a, a huge following by attacking it. You can create huge Twitter profiles and in content by saying, by yelling at people on both sides of this, and then people yell at you. And all you do is make that thing stronger. And you think you're winning, but you were just wasting your time. Whereas Bitcoin is repricing that whole thing, everything, and over, over time, because of what we just said before. If it is true, if it's decentralized, secure, open protocol, bounded by energy and creating more energy abundance, then <laughs> then nothing is going to stop it from repricing the world. Now, the only thing you'd have to say is where is, where is the risk of it getting centralized? It, it, you, you would have to d determine that you'd have to go in and say, okay, I believe that this is what's going to happen. And then you'd have yeah. your, your argument on how that's going to happen would have to um, be strong enough to say, cause I can't see anything, anything that I've looked at that doesn't keep this true. So, so, um, and, and so now go to the first thing I said, if technology, if technology brings prices down the fall marginal cost of production and globally, we should have always lived in a deflationary world. Yep. And the only thing that could measure that is this new system. Then for all the participants of the new system, they're pricing the real market over forever. Prices will fall forever. And, yeah. and anybody, and now let's say you're a government and say, say even let's, re, let's reset the debt. One day, all the debt's gone and we're going to reset the debt. But the natural rate of deflation in the market should be 5% per year and accelerating and getting more as all the productivity flows. Mm -hmm. That means a 0% inflation rate, 2% inflation rate, steals 5 to 7%. And it has to steal more and more. So now if you're measuring from that currency that has to steal from you, and you believe it's a really valuable currency, and Bitcoin doesn't care, then relative yep. to that, that currency, Bitcoin's just going to go up. But relative to all prices, all prices yep. will keep falling a bit against Bitcoin. So from that, from those very simple kind of, you'd first have, what I try to do is I try to, what is true, and then if a new rule has been imposed upon us, what does that change? And instead of, looking from the system we live in today forward, I look at what the new rules impose to all of our belief structures from the new rules. Yeah. I think that's a nice leeway into uh, this summarizes. It's a part that you also wrote where you said, our belief of how the world should exist and operate is shaped from looking backwards, not forward, as you just said. So it makes sense that new paradigms that change everything face resistance in our minds because most people don't see them breaking through an existing paradigm needs to provide enough compelling value for users to disrupt an old paradigm, right? That's shifting from fiat world yeah. to the Bitcoin world. 
this is kind of like an introduction to a part where you talk about a process called creative destruction. How does, um, well, what is it and how does Bitcoin contribute to or accelerate this with regards to, you know, cu the current economic system? Yeah, Joseph Schumpeter came up, uh, Schumpeter came up with a term called creative destruction. I think it was, what, in the 30s, um, and, and how all free markets work. Um, and essentially, there's a monopoly there before. And an insight comes, whether it's technology or something else, that breaks that monopoly. And and the, there's a challenge in the beliefs. And what does a monopoly do? Is it puts up walls to be able to stop the new innovation, typically. Mm -hmm. there, that can't be true because my whole thing is um, is destroyed from from that. And all the people in the belief st structure today, you could say, you you could say Galileo did that with the church. Yeah, by looking out and saying, looking out at the stars with a telescope and saying, "Wait, the the Earth moves around the sun rather than the other way around," right? Yeah, and that belief structure changes over time. Everything else, if it's true, and it changes, and so this is how businesses work too, because businesses, all of the economic activity, everything that you take for granted, is is a process where entrepreneurs are trying to deliver you more value. And you yeah. only use the things that give more value. So that creative destruction, if somebody gives you more value, you use it. And then more and more people compete to give you more value. And the output of that is deflation. Yeah. And, and because, and think about the other way for it not to be, it would mean you as a person wouldn't, wouldn't, you would use the things that gave you less value. Yeah. That like it make makes sense. no sense, right? It <laughs> yeah. makes no sense. So, yeah. so, so for me, mm -hmm. I, I find this so so interesting. That but you have to be aware of that, like new truth in a in yeah. a sense, right? So, I'm, I feel like, where do we place Bitcoin? Because in the sense, in in the article, you have an example of uh, the BlackBerry and the iPhone, right? Where yeah. also the iPhone didn't use the keyboard of the BlackBerry, right? Which was like the innovative thing bef yeah. before the iPhone, right? So they they made a new thing, right? So. I see that as a certain level, but when we talk about Galileo, for example, that was a like a, a real a 180, trip. right? Yeah. A real 180 in uh, in how you view the position of the Earth, like in, in the universe. Like yeah. on the, that's another level. And then Bitcoin. So by I the think, way, so is this? So is exactly, this. yeah, yeah. There, I'm, I'm coming. Uh, I, I think Bitcoin is at that level, right? Because we talk about money, we talk about the technology we use to exchange information with each other, right? Uh, I think that's also why in general it's hard for people, but I agree with you. Like as long as that is true, like what Bitcoin entails, right? And, and how it's, um, how it's constructed, as you said, like, is it really decentralized? You know, it's like, you can check all these things. It's super transparent, perhaps even more accessible to check than, you know, Galileo's, uh, yeah, state exactly. statement, right. For, for anyone basically, but. If Bitcoin is also that big as 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 the Galileo example, when you just mentioned like entrepreneurs, right? <laughs> they they can help show more people this new truth or this new this new system, and then also help them adopt adopt it, right? So how how do you see that role of entrepreneurs? You know, yeah, so pushing uh, Bitcoin. This. This is a little complex, and again, it's not complex at all. It's actually rather simple, but it's our beliefs are complex on the other things that are getting changed slowly. So yeah. here's here's an example of what people confuse Bitcoin, and even in the example I used BlackBerry and, and Apple and that. We see more. So 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 BlackBerry thought it was competing against a phone without a keyboard. Yeah, yeah. it was competing against a a totally different communication device and, and all of these apps that provide provided like a hundred X value over a phone. It was something yeah. totally different and nobody would seen it before. So, so it's, un, it's totally understandable why Blackberry thought they were competing against a phone because that's what they had. Yeah. That was a monopoly. And so, but this is an example of what we see, what you see more often, what everybody sees more often is companies. Um, because there's more companies competing in the free market, right? To give you more value. Yep. And then the next level under companies, we see broad-based technologies 
that changed the underlying structure of everything in, in, in companies. The internet was, or it was or the AI is an example today of a broad-based yeah. technology that a whole bunch of other companies are using. And we see the companies more often. These broad-based technologies or electricity was another that sweep around and change all of the companies on top, kind of reset yeah. the game in new companies. But remember, we don't see those broad-based technologies as often as we see companies. So we're used yeah. to thinking in companies. Then the next level is we see broad-based technologies. We see them less frequently. And then very infrequently, we see protocols. Yeah. And, and Bitcoin um, is in the protocol space. So it would make sense that if everybody was thinking it was a technology or a company, that they would be really confused. The internet was in the protocol space. So the internet TCP IP is the base level of the internet that's used for this Riverside communication right now. And it was 1989, four layers after that, that HTTP was formed when all entrepreneurs created companies and value on top of the internet. And remember what the internet looked like in 1989. I do, right? It was like, it, like it was it, this mail and it was really hard, but you could see a glimpse yeah. of the future and a whole bunch of entrepreneurs started building onto that future. And then in 2007, the iPhone came up using the exact same protocol stack. Yeah. This, but this would Riverside you say, does this. Yeah. But would you say then if people compare Bitcoin to like the horses and the train and, you know, like these examples, that's, that's, that's not that's, really correct. It's not a good, right? it's not a, yeah, ex you could, but it, but it's a, it, it's a weak yeah. example because. But then like because, the gunpowder example is better. I'd say like, that's the, like a new protocol for war or, or battle. In a, in a sense, but, right? Like, but I would the, say those, even even those are more broad based yeah. technologies rather than mm. protocols. And so protocols come. So where around. do we go then? Like, so, so as the, an U, example, the U.S. Dollar, the the US, yeah, the U.S. dollar right now in the, around the world is a protocol. Right? Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, um, but like and, fire and stuff like that. Like, is that is that still? Yeah, I would I would say I would still say that that's probably a technology, and that's why these are so. Mm. And, and people could argue about the semantics of what I'm saying, but but just if you just kind of simplify what I'm saying, mm. is we very rarely see protocols. Yeah, and there's something that's that what I try in. more like to illustrate. You know why it's so hard to understand. Is that because you have to get to that level and there's not a lot of reference as to like how big can this be, right? So even aside from just the personal challenge of, you know, changing your mind like this, just like how how do I compare this to what? That's, that's because it. whatever you compare it to is probably outside of your lifetime also. That's, right. That, that's right. That's that's right. And so it's so easy to go back into the trap and carry your baggage of all your beliefs into the future. When yeah. if you just said the base layer of the new internet is because think about what protocols do. They do one thing really well, right? And they sacrifice other things to do that one thing really well. Yeah. So Bitcoin did decentralization and security really well. Yeah. And to do that, they, um, they created a, a, a game incentive around securing abundant energy, kind of providing a marketing market incentive. And they have nodes that are keeping that decentralized all over the world, kind of enforcing the rules. Yeah. So the design space to be able to do that decentralized and security really well creates a base layer that can't do anything else. It can't scale. Yeah. And people thought, and people thought because they thought it was a technology, they thought, oh, hmm. we're going to create another technology like a Ethereum Faster one. to scale, yeah. right? Yeah. When when they when they're missing the whole thing that it's a protocol and the fir and and if you lose decentralized and security then it looks exactly like the same as the US system and the entire system would would fail. So the yeah. decentralization and security and, and the ability that it wouldn't scale on the base layer to billions of transactions on the ba uh, per second to, on base layer is not a bug, it's a feature. But people yeah. thinking through the lens that it was a bug could easily convince other and most people believing in technologies and seeing a whole bunch of people getting rich on Bitcoin for doing nothing, right? Just holding it. Um, would say, oh, I'm going to get build the next cool technology, mm. right? And they would get rich in the f by by essentially confusing those two things, and so now lightning comes in, and you have this, the second layer that every ten minutes comes down to the first level layer, and it makes trade offs, and those trade offs mean lightning. If you just played forward lightning, 
um, even right now, what people think versus what it'll look like. Um, you see a whole bunch of nonsense about lightning can't scale to um, to billions of people, um, and it's because a lot of the the developers in the space tried to build lightning with the same rules as Bitcoin base layer. In other words, the scaling layer they built, I, I use an analogy as they used to be able to drive that liquidity, they built backlane one-way gravel roads and people would get locked up in that backlane gravel road and then not have enough liquidity on the other lane to go, go back. And so people right now, even a lot of Twitter believes that lightnings can't scale. When there's companies like Breeze building the super highways that that connect cities, right? Can, um, that you can scale on and off to other things like Fediment to be able to connect and scale in layers. And so that's exactly what the internet did. It scaled in yep. layers, um, and and each layer provides a different different functionality with different trade offs. But what I just described doesn't need a token doesn't need anything else, doesn't need, it, it will scale in layers like like this. Um, there will be a whole bunch of noise. You have to expect what the existing system is gonna do. If you if you realize that you can't, can't attack layer one, right? If you're a government actor and you can't win on layer one and now BlackRock's coming in and everything else, what would you do? You would try to attack layer two. And if you could yeah. attack layer two, what it would look like is you could hold it. It would eventually break. What I would describe would eventually the free market would win and it doesn't matter, but you could suppress the price through layer two to keep mm. your economic system in, um, in check instead of allowing it to be a peer, a peer to peer market. So yeah. in that context, I can actually see all of the things that are playing out here. And they make perfect sense to me because I've already done the I've already done all of the game theory of what would happen. Mm. Two things. So what you just said, like um, I, I went to this is why Bitcoin cannot be discovered twice, basically. Yeah, exactly. Right? Because the, just this set of rules with this type of enforcement, with this type of incentives, like. But yeah, it's you a, can it's, literally it's copy it, but yeah. yeah, exactly, right? So that's why it's a discovery. So all the things built on top are technology. Um, but what I see nowadays, and maybe that's also, you know, uh, in, in terms of what people say on Twitter, like, oh, lightning field, etc. Do people expect stuff too fast? like to change too fast? Like we are in 2024. Like sometimes I have this <laughs> idea that people expect lots of change in a very short amount of time and one example is that people now say well a litecoin or, or like lightning was like uh, i don't know three years old why why doesn't it work you know but is that too narrow of a of a view you'd say Abraham, i i use lightning every day it always works it's grown 1200 percent over the last two years it's exploding. We've been, we invested in a company that was doing 15, 50 million in top line revenue or in, t in trading volume in, in August. Mm. It did 470 million on lightning transactions in, uh, in January. Wow. It, this is it, 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 the illusion that this doesn't scale mm. when I use it every day. I just, it, it's so laughable. Um, and, yeah. and here's the thing. It provides anytime somebody says that it provides opportunities for entrepreneurs to be able to solve different problems, which is happening. And so it is scaling. It's yeah. just going to scale in a different way because people are confused that it needs to scale in the same way Bitcoin layer one needs to scale. Like mm. Bitcoin layer one. That's needs a fair to be. point. Yeah. So the, so, so the confusion is it will over time. Lightning will not centralize. It will centralize a little bit. The liquidity on it will centralize. So there'd probably be six large liquidity providers, maybe 10, but it'll still, and because it'll be more efficient to use the super highways mm. and those yeah. liquidity providers can provide you a higher, it's not a yield fees on your Bitcoin in a non-custodial fashion, because they'll be more efficient, more transactions, so, yeah. more transactions yeah. and more efficient and, and, and mm. they're building the super highways. So, yeah. so that means there won't be thousands 
or hundreds of thousands of of essentially nodes like we're or uh, in in, mm-hmm. in in Bitcoin, there be the liquidity is it'll, will it gravitate. But what does that mean for the overall market? That means if number one tries to increase the price, number two wins. Right? Mm-hmm. And it constantly prices fall to the marginal cost of production because yeah. this system enforces those rules. And so people people are tra- treating monopolies as they're formed out of broken money, like yeah. monopolies could li- li- exist on 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 a system like this. And so yeah. that's one of the things where people are dragging their baggage into the new system, believing it'll work the same. It won't work the same at all. Yeah. Well, that's probably the biggest shift also. Like I'd say that if the base layer is transparent and honest and true, then everything built on top should follow the rules of the base layer, right? I think that's basically what you're saying, that you are forced to follow. You cannot play the fiat games on top of a Bitcoin layer in, in the, well, you can try, but you'll get liquid. That won't work. Like, so exactly. what, what, yeah. what, what will happen? Look, just look at the history in Bitcoin. Every mm-hmm. single person that tries to change Bitcoin to, to create something else for themselves to concentrate their own token yeah. gets, gets liquidated eventually. Every single yeah. person that says plays fiat games on Bitcoin gets liquidated. And yeah. that's, so are, are fiat games going to keep tr- happening on uh, Bitcoin? 100%. Is, are there a ton of wars coming after Bitcoin and a ton of information wars to be able to convince you that this is, this is the way it should go? 100%. Because yeah. the existing system is at risk of what's happening here. So you have to expect everything. Yeah. Um, and then, and then do your own work on saying, okay, what could that mean? Right. But like, um, and, and like, let's use an example today. Let's say, um, enough, uh, enough Bitcoin gets consolidated in ETFs and, and Warren tries to do not, uh, uh, and make non-custodial wallets illegal. There's too mm-hmm. many people right now that know Bitcoin and self-custody and uh, non-custodial. There's just too many people. So if that ended up happening and there was price suppression, what would happen with all those Bitcoiners that know? This insight changes people. The insight mm. changes everything behind. Because what I know what I would do as the price suppression came in, I would buy more Bitcoin. I would take it off the exchange. Yeah, exactly. Then, right, I know what yeah. you would do. I know what I, mm. all my friends would do. And so all of this, we, we think a system is just stays stable. Yeah. It, the knowledge well, and that, that, that this, also shows, sorry to interrupt, but that also, yeah. I like the, the statement by uh, Jason Lowry, like you cannot ban Bitcoin. You can only ban yourself from adopting Bitcoin, right? Like that is this yeah. example, right? So she thinks she's protecting the old system, but actually accelerating that it's going to lose, basically. Yeah, exa- accelerating its demise. Because yeah, an, exactly. insight, yeah, an, an insight like this, because you, if you go back to what, what she's saying, we know that the existing system has to steal productivity at a greater and greater rate, right? So we yeah. know it's based on theft. And we know that all of the politicians on top of that, no matter which side of the aisle, they're also based on theft. Hmm. It wouldn't look like that. We know most of the things, because if you think about what's funding that, you're funding it through hmm. living in that system. And you're, yes. you're funding it, and so is everybody else. And, and, and they're, they believe there's a fix from that system with this politician versus this politician. And they're up in arms. They'll march on streets. They'll, well, they're actually making it stronger. Where, yeah. where, where it's it, it like it's nuts. And well, then if, because they're not changing the base layer system, right? Like that's because, the whole because point. They don't like they're know, marching they, they, on top of it somewhere. Exactly. Exactly. They they haven't yeah. they haven't done the calculation on what we're talking about, and so so, and and so you could join them, you could yell at them, you could get really mad, but why? Because because you're already living in the future if you're on Bitcoin. What's so fascinating to me is that like I feel like it only takes like one politician or party in other in, in other countries like America to adopt Bitcoin and then all the dominoes fall. Like it feels like it, it'll it'll uh, it'll, uh, it'll play I don't like know. you said before. It's gonna take out to, it's gonna take longer than you than you think. So if if you think about today, hmm. even the US people say the US dollar is gonna die um tomorrow. 
Good luck. Hmm. Um, Because all of the countries that just repriced their currencies in US dollars and all of those, essentially, they don't want it to fail. (laughs) No, no, but all of their their labor just got 50%, Hmm. 75% cheaper. All of their raw materials just got cheaper. It extends Hmm. the life of the US dollar um, from the existing system. So these things are going to, but both of those measured in Bitcoin doesn't matter. Both yeah. of those, like it's, it, it's ludicrous to even talk about it because you're talking about things that are losing value. You're just talking about the rate of them losing value from the existing system. Whereas Bitcoin is repricing the whole thing. Yeah. So to move towards this part of, of the article, you said something about the necessity of failure versus the prevention of failure that, that really stood out to me where. You know, lots of governments want to prevent failure because they think they will lose face or something. I don't know. Like they think failure is not good, but yeah. So you argue that preventing failure in economies has led to significant consequences. Like, can you can you expand a bit on this idea that failure yeah, is and, critical? And, and I think there's a lot of people that believe they live in a free market capitalism. Hmm. Um, and and I so I would say a couple of my really close friends going through this that are very very wealthy in real estate, and they became really real wealthy in real estate because of of a manipulated system that pushes up re- re- uh, real estate at the expense of productivity, um, and people and they're storing their value in real estate. Um, and they're somewhat protected from money being destroyed. And so, and they think that it's a free market and they're so mad when the government comes in and says, um, we're going to regulation, rent controls, everything else are like crazy uh, mad. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, on the art, on if, if it's a free market and we stop <laughs> printing money, what happens to real estate? Like it's, you just stop today. What happens to real yeah. estate and let it keep stopping. And says, let's walk through that. Um, and, and so they see real estate starts falling, then it fall, falls more. Every bank fails. Real estate, real estate fails like almost to zero. All of their debts fail. All of their life, all of their wealth fails. Um, and, th- and then they say, well, that will never happen. Then do we live in a free market? Right? And, and so it's, like, it, it's, it's crazy to me that people can't put these together. Because be, but what does end up is happening is... Then they'll make a justification for it's almost free hmm. without seeing the negative yeah, externalities. Because you profited from it, of exactly. course. You say that. Without, yeah, of course. without seeing, without what seeing else would you say? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> without seeing the negative externalities <laughs> of mm. that almost free. And so now you have a control system yeah. that, that looks a lot like communism. Capitalism and communism are the same thing under printed money. Yeah. Well, the government controls you, obviously. Well, it controls your thoughts or your wants and your needs, it's like a, you and, said. And, like and, the... and, as that, and as artificial intelligence accelerates and should make productivity flow to everybody faster in the form of lower prices, mm. the government has to consolidate more and more and take away more individual rights and freedoms to be able to control you. And, yeah. and, and it's crazy to me that people can't see this coming. Because it's Is that so... because they cannot allow you to access this? Too no, much because if, pr- if, if prices fall from a debt-based system, so when people say yeah. deflation is bad, they're saying deflation is. They're not saying they're not finishing the sentence. They're mm. saying deflation is bad from a debt-based system because the debt gets more expensive and it in, and it goes insolvent. Yeah. So they're not finishing the sentence, or they're mm. not saying. Or, and people aren't asking, well, it, if I vote every day through my time to get more value, and I I choose things every day to get more value. How is deflation yeah. bad? It services me. So the free market in that case ensures that the entire world gains that productivity, not a couple people in the world hmm. um, that are extracting it from everybody else. So how do your friends react when you when you talk through this? When like when you say like is there actually free market, they defend it a bit so, and then Yeah, most of my most of my friends are now Bitcoiners. <laughs> but it takes, um, yeah. but, um, and I'm, I'm some of my friends that had a hard time coming around to this, um, because I would just keep on questioning from where they were. And mm-hmm. then, and then when they saw that they, um, and I didn't do it in, in, in a mad way or anything else. I just asked them to solve the paradox themselves. And then eventually as they couldn't yeah. solve the paradox, they started to realize, huh, I need to put more, more of my time over here. 
Yeah, makes sense. So when you talk about how advancing technology is inherently deflationary, uh, in the article, you 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 show how it conflicts with an inflationary monetary policy, right? It's basically yep. also what we just mentioned. They don't want to fail. So how does Bitcoin fit into an economy where technological process drives prices down? Like, is this finally the thing in which we should measure technological advancement? Does that make sense? Like, like because yeah, it makes it deflationary, and if we measure it in Bitcoin, then that is that is the match. That's it. It. it, it, it um, people talk about the uh, AI singularity, where, where all AI is smarter than all of us, and do and robots are doing all of our work. Can you imagine yeah. that AI singularity in a world where prices are are, are supposed to rise? Yeah, that makes no sense. Does it make any sense? No. Like, why do we no. create? This, why do we create technology? We create it to save our time. Yeah, and exactly. productivity from it should flow to uh, to us. It's just yeah. it can't from the existing system. So, so these two systems so it's are sabotage moving. is technological advancement, and, the, and then right? what? And then and then what happens with all of the people stuck in the wrong system? What they do is they get moved to fear, and it's easy to convince them that it's somebody else's fault. It's easy to convince mm -hmm. them that it's the Democrats' fault, or it's the Republicans' fault, or yeah. or it's it's Ukraine's fault, or it's Russia's fault, or it's Israel's fault. It's easy to convince, and they will grab, or it's the environment. They will grab on the thing they care about. And yeah. yell at everybody on the other side of that, and make the whole thing stronger. Yeah, it's it's but really change, it's really like... easy it's really easy to divide people hmm. in this uh, in this because we have our belief constructed yeah. by all of this, and it's easy to it's it, it we don't want to see it in ourselves. We don't want to see that paradox. When I said it, some some hmm. of my billionaire friends, you don't want to see it in yourself. You have to believe. You protect that. Right, you protect it because um, it feels like and, some sort of failure, of course. You, like, exactly. Like, no, I, no, no, no. I, I, I created I all up. this wealth. I, yeah, I exactly. did it all. Right? I yeah. did it all myself. I did it all. Yeah. So you can't, because deconstructing mm. that mean, means a whole bunch of the things you used to believe have to change. And so that's really yeah. hard for people to go through. And it's easier to say, no, your version of reality is true. It's those people. Yeah. So because people find that difficult, that internal struggle, you know, tr true fear, they can be corroborated to do or believe, you know, a, di a different thing. And you just mentioned like the, the 10x advantage, that concept comes also comes back in the article. I think that talks also more about how Bitcoin could be a solution to the problem these people have, but they are not aware of the fact that they have this problem, yeah. you know, especially yeah. people who are wealthy through the fiat system. So. And and you are an investor, right? Like uh, I, I've also seen lots and lots of startups. You have to understand the problem before you can adopt the solution, right? Yeah. So we have this internal struggle of, uh, well, uh, I didn't understand this system, but I still got rich. <laughs> what? Like how did I do this? But the so they don't see the problem. Like how can we how can we show people the problem? Or like what like like how can Bitcoin be a ten x advantage in the solution if people don't know the problem? Or that their current solution is very, very flawed. So I think it, it is showing that, and it's showing it more and more. And your podcast shows more people. Like, think about what this podcast would have looked like, or or you're you trying to do what you're doing right now, try and mm. do that uh, thirty years ago. You couldn't have done yeah, that. Yeah, it would be super crazy. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't have done it. You would have to fly yeah. people into a studio. You would have to have enough money to put. And and oh, now, like that, yeah, yeah, mm. and 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 now through technology. You can touch millions of people through a podcast mm -hmm. that might touch. And then one of those people, one of those people that changes their mind might touch billions of people. And you have no idea that it was you that touched the, touch this. And, that's true. And, and, um, and, and that's how the world changes. It changes through that pe belief system changing in people and the belief system. If that belief system is anchored on a false reality, eventually people see it. Yeah. The truth, it's hard to put out the truth. Mm -hmm. Well, I, in, my, uh, in, in one of the previous episodes with Eric Kaysen, he said, like, you don't have to believe that I think this is the truth. I actually invite you to check it for yourself, right? And yep. that is also, I think, so interesting about Bitcoin. There's nothing else where you can 
actually do that. Like you have to believe someone on their word or their merit or whatever their social status or some, you know, place in a hierarchy is or whatever. Like in, in this case, you know, if someone listens to this podcast and thinks like, okay, this kind of makes sense what these guys are talking about. Like I should figure this out myself. Like you can actually do that, but it's also that we or people in Bitcoin invite people to check it out for themselves, yeah. right? Because you you cannot orange pill someone like you have, they have to do that themselves, of course. You meet them where they are. Yeah. yeah. And Eric, Eric's awesome. The I'm just playing on that. Why do you care? Like uh, if you're, if you're kind of thinking about like, um, mm. so people that get so worked up about, I was the one that orange pilled them. I was the, um, then, then I do agree. We should, try to impact others through the lives we lead right positively yeah. through the lives we live and that'll yeah. leave a lasting legacy on the life we had and we're all connected all over the world and so if more mm -hmm. people did that then it would just it would move faster but why do we care so there's a lot of people there's a lot of people and i i'll use it myself as an example before um i knew all this you see the articles they predicted this perfectly right all of this yeah. stuff and i and and up till two and a half years ago, I had 90% of my time in the fiat world and 10% of my time in Bitcoin. And I was hedged against the fiat world, but all my time was dedicated to the existing fiat world, boards, everything else. And mm -hmm. I realized huh, the same thing I was saying to my friends, I was a hypocrite, complete hypocrite, right? And that was a hard thing to realize in myself that yeah. I was making the, even though I knew all this thought leader in the space, watched it, watching it all play out. Yes, I was protected from all the damage myself. My family was protected. But I was making the existing system stronger through all my actions. And that was hard, hard to deal with. And so I, that's, why, that's why we started Ego Death Capital. The prim, primary reason is I needed to move my time, my most important, my most valuable thing, into the system I wanted to be true. And, yeah. and, and by doing that, other people see that action and they move their time. And more and more people start to move their time and the, and that what the world just unfolds. So, so if people see me kind of on this journey and they see me as this, okay, he's really important and everything else. And I didn't move. Right. Like, like mm. <laughs> you, I, you well, kind then of, what to believe, right? Exactly. Like that's well, the whole, well, that's the whole point. Why didn't yeah. I, why didn't I move? Right. And, mm. and I know. And, and so th this is kind of, this is kind of why I say, so how could I talk out of the side of my mouth saying you should get Bitcoin, you should get Bitcoin, you should get Bitcoin mm. when I, um, I didn't, I didn't. Yeah. And so, so seeing that and then, and, and it heightened, highlighted something for me in what we're talking about. We all believe everybody else should do the thing, right. That we're doing. And they're looking through the world with their view of the world. Um, if we just did, and 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 it's really yeah. our view. Of Matt, we are walking in a peripheral exists, view. We are, view. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we should yeah. mm. let people do whatever they want. Let them do. You do. You do the things that make you happy. You do mm. the things that drive you. If those things are congruent with, essentially, on a truthful ledger, hope and abundance will flow from that, and you'll inspire more people from that than yelling at them for how they should change. Yeah, I agree. I think this is something I've definitely run into. Like I talked about this with Daniel Bett and we talked about how how people reply to Elizabeth Warren on Twitter, you know, <laughs> and I confessed to him that I once replied to her like, you're a bad loser. And then we talked about, you know, no, no, we should be like positive, right? Like it, it should be... Um, we should reply with more empathy like like do you think she's going to change her mind when you say she's a bad loser and i'm like yeah you're totally yeah. right you know but it's just so it's it's funny because i think it also touches like uh, it touched like my own um i think also personal struggle as you just also said like how how do i step out of this fiat world or adopt this new world and like what are the beliefs that i still have to um, and, change right, and, and, that, and that's why yeah. the rabbit hole is so big, right? So yeah, I think exactly. I think yeah. through I, I think through this. I think I mm. truly believe that this is a rise in consciousness for all of society over time, de delivered yeah. by Bitcoin. I think it's I agree it, it, those polarities of the singularity, the AI singularity, which is the mm. technology that we create and service to us, is the same thing to allow it to flow to us in Bitcoin. I think mm. these are all the same thing, um, and and. 
and out of living on an honest ledger and what that does to society. Imagine connecting now. So if you if you looked at the world today and you said, there's probably 400, 300 million minds connected to the global system, um, extracting wealth from 7.7 .7 billion. Yeah. Imagine what it looks like when 8 billion minds are connected in service to us, all of us. Is mm -hmm. that it's something that's so crazy? But that's what that's where we are going. It, like, if people believe that's crazy or they don't want that to happen, then they can yeah. keep living in the other system. But I'm going to live in the new system. I'm going to move yeah. my energy to that. Yeah. So why why are the people that are in charge then so afraid of free markets? Like, <clears> is that ego or is that malicious or don't they just un they don't they just don't just don't understand? Like, why? Why is this not really a thing? So I, I, I'm fond of saying there is no they, only us. Hmm. Right? I like that. And yeah. Only us. So when I showed you the hypocrisy in myself, I showed you that it's all of us. It's not them. So what that hmm. meant before that is I complain about somebody else doing that while I give them more power with all my time. It's only us. Yeah. And the incentive system changes through us one at a time over in time. And today with the discovery of Bitcoin is it's brought an insight to the world and has brought an open decentralized secure uh, protocol to the world that is unstoppable because we're unstoppable. And the more people, if, if people want the speed, what drives the speed? The speed is driven by how many people realize they have control. Yeah. And there is no they. And the longer mm. people believe it's those people, the longer they stay trapped in that system because they're giving all of their energy to those people. Yeah. Instead of giving it them to themselves. To themselves. Right. It's yeah, us. I agree. Mm. And so it talked about decentralization, keeping it secure, but part of the discovery of Bitcoin is the introduction of the concept of digital scarcity or, or a finite digital scarcity. Also, like, how does that challenge traditional economics of, of supply and demand when we also, I think, put that in like a free market. So, so one of the, one of the, I would say baggages that people carry is they don't look at economics um, mm. because it's too scary for them because there's too, too many big words and what this looks like. They feel like they're, they're um, it's, it's, it's really, really hard. It's the easiest thing ever. We trade with people all over the world mm. and we try to get even more value. And through that process, prices fall. That's economics, full stop. And things that, that, things that are scarce because they drive higher prices and higher margins get attacked by more entrepreneurs to create abundance. To and so they never, stay scarce for, they never stay scarce for long. Um, never. The only reason they stay scarce for long is you, if you create abundance in money. Then if you create abundance in money, then everything becomes scarce. Yeah, scarcity money through the process we just discussed, discussed drives everything to abundance because prices fall to the marginal cost of production, and that's economics. I think that's so because the reward is scarce. The, be, you because are incentivized it, to, to innovate it, and, to innovate yeah. it, to attack okay. it, right? Yeah, and so so imagine things like everything's free in the world, but this one thing, and so nobody needs to work. Everything's free, but this one thing is really expensive. What do you think yeah. people would do? Right? They would attack like all the people in the planet would attack that one thing to make it abundant. Yeah. And so so that's economics. And I think that's economics. I'm I might be a little bit bold here, but I think that's economics full stop. And, and is it realize, then also sorry, today I had a conversation uh with my mother actually. We I don't know what we talked about. I I I think we saw there was a, uh, there's like a consumer show here on television and they talk about food, like how messed up the food is. And there was a, a um, there was an episode about honey, how, how the honey is faked with stuff from China or well, whatever. And so then we talked about like, why are some things that are supposedly special, right? Because one teaspoon of honey comes from 4,000 flower visits of a bee, I learned. So it's a special thing. Why should everyone have that, right? And then we talked about, um, for example, flying from Amsterdam to New York, 
before it was very special and you had like fresh food on board and a big chair and like all these things, right? And you actually had to save to do this trip. Now you buy a ticket for 300 euros sometimes, right? Why should things be accessible for everyone? And now that we are talking, I'm thinking about this is also the incentive of that infinite money, right? Then the things that were like high value and special before are getting like commoditized in a sense, but also the whole experience breaks down, right? Because now... I am stuck in a little chair. I have to pay for my food in, in the in the airplane, and like it's not like the experience before, right? Is, is that also so? So that's exactly so. So what yeah. happens is, then they let's use a honey example. Then um, you have to you have to centralize and secure more honey, and to be able to compete on price, you insert bad ingredients to, into honey, make people more sick, that, that drive into the entire medical medical kind of mm. consolidated process. More people are sick, more drugs, more. If you look at the largest companies in the world today, food companies, medical, um, uh, the, uh, war, essentially Rayathon in the world, it's the same actors all over. And why has mm. it all been centralized? It's all been centralized because of, because of bad money. Those wouldn't yep. exist. It wouldn't look like that at all. It would just, it would, all of the productivity would flow to society. Society would get richer. So, well, so they would be mean, constrained, well, right, with a scarce money. They would be constrained in the in the fuckery, basically, because they will run into a wall at some point. Like they, they are not able to be, because people would choose others. Yeah, people, exactly. Because yeah. people wouldn't have one choice, one choice of one company that owns twenty other mm. companies that they think they're making different choices through different brands. They would have almost infinite choice of entrepreneurs trying to deliver them more value. Yeah. As a side note, I, I mean, you probably agree that BlackRock is one of these companies that owns like <laughs> lots of other companies that, again, you know, own other companies like them adopting Bitcoin, adopting, quote unquote. Like, how, how do you view how do you view that then? Like, because that is, is that like a Trojan horse in a sense? Like, um, or could it be? How do, how do you see it? Um, I can tell you this, that the just because I see it in, in ego death, I see it in uh, what we're, we're, we're doing, is mm. inside every big corporation are people that know exactly what you and I are talking about, that are, are massive Bitcoin bet maxis. Mm. And inside the organization, for a long time, they, they might have been for a long time, and then there's another, and then there's another. And we treat these organizations as there's that big, bad organization one entity, all an organization yeah. is yeah, is yeah. people right i agree and so yeah so so i'm not saying that you shouldn't suspect that and say say that what would a system do to try to regain control it would try to consolidate as much bitcoin as it could right mm -hmm. and then try to stop layer two from happening and to, try to stop self-custody from happening if you believe that but i think then on the other side they just planted a flag and said this asset class is going nowhere and now more people, way more people, are starting to come into the top of the funnel to learn yeah. what we're talking about right now. And as yeah. those people learn, if 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 four years ago, if five years ago, seven years ago, whatever time you think you've know, known Bitcoin, and every day or every year you get deeper, and you you move more of your attention into it, why wouldn't yeah. it be the same for people coming on today? That's all that's yeah, happening. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think that's a that's a good positive point, like view view to to look at this. Like uh, I I I fully agree with this that we should not see it as one entity, you know. Uh, and there's actually I don't know I saw I saw a podcast uh, and they talked about the young guy who apparently orange pilled Larry Fink, like a really young guy, like mid twenty or or something, who apparently uh, went to work there to with the goal to set up. A Bitcoin ETF and Rob, he... Robbie Robbie Mitchnick, I know him. I think that's the name. Yeah. Yeah. I know. So I, uh, I know. I, I know. Yeah. Him. Yeah. Well, so that's a great example of that, right? Yeah. Um, I remember when I worked at a bank ten years ago, nine years ago. Um, now that you have this example, I did the same. I was already into Bitcoin. The only thing I was talking about in the bank was about Bitcoin, yeah. right? And, I, and now I know actually a lot of people, I think of like 10 of them that I used to work with who are also into Bitcoin. So I fully agree. Like uh, people should adopt this uh, this more. Um, considering the potential for Bitcoin to become like a global reserve currency, what changes 
do you anticipate when it actually does or do you think it it could actually so become so that's why you have to zoom out it's it's more than a global reserve currency it's it's a, a new uh, peer-to-peer internet bounded by energy um and and yeah. it's everything it's a currency it's it's all the communication layer it's uh it's, it becomes it becomes everything Th- and, that's why this is so hard <laughs> and that's why it's so, so and, and so yeah. you, again even the question mm. presupposes every single time somebody says bitcoin price in the current in their currency that's being devalued they're actually mm. reinforcing their bias to the existing system yeah right instead of measuring from the new system and why is that but we should i don't do, do, I don't do that I, I don't do that at all i just think okay if mm. this is imposes these rules this is what's going to happen why that yeah. article that you're talking about the greatest game essentially if you read it today it's four years later um if you read it today it predicted all of what we're seeing right yeah well before is because you can see all of the actions from both systems if you yeah. understand what's going to what has to has to happen so i'm i I talked to Lynn Alden the other day about this uh, in in New York. We were when we we, we were saying what we're surprised about is more that, that more people are surprised. <laughs> like this is not like this isn't surprising at all. Well, to be honest, I think I'm surprised every week because there's all these new angles and new ways of seeing this development. Um, yeah, it's funny. But but yeah but but if you if you if you understand that this is going to happen it doesn't that you know that it has not happened yet right like we are in this we are in this journey right and so that that is I think why this the surprise element of course is still there it's more entertain I, I talked to Lisa Huff last week yeah and we talked about how it's entertaining we called it entertaining you it's know, entertaining it's just, yeah yeah. The uh, now now play this uh, play this forward because what you and the other thing kind of embedded in that question is I think a lot of people get confused about this, um, and because they're they're trying to the, they're trying to time the entry point where one system looks like this and then one mm. next day it looks like this that doesn't happen no that doesn't happen yeah. that didn't happen in BlackBerry Apple mm. that didn't happen in any system change ever it didn't happen in Galileo's time it never happens. It happens one person at a time as yeah. the world transitions. And if you're measuring from the system that's being corrupted and you're giving that system more energy, you're going to feed that. It's going to feel like worse. It's going to feel worse to you. If you're measuring from the system that's not co-opted, if you're, if you're, if you're giving that system more energy, it's going to feel better. And so you could have all of these people with different views. Hmm. Um, and it'll still do that over over time. I just chose, and I think you are are too, and many people, just choosing to dedicate more of my time into the system that gives me abundance. Yeah, I think that's also why it's so important that you really have to understand this first yourself before you talk about these things, as you mentioned. Like uh, people expect too much in a in a too short period. Yeah. Um. But once you really understand, or it's not even understand, I think it's more like integrating, right? And that, that you moved yeah. enough out of this old system that that is, I think, what, uh, you know, when we talk about the consciousness extract or the enlightenment, you know, or how yeah. it frees your mind, I think that's where that comes in. Because then you don't have to trust based on a feeling, you trust based on an understanding, which I think in Bitcoin's case is so big that that is kind of like the ego challenge there right like that that's well at least that's what i have that i have this internal challenge where i'm like do i actually understand that it's so big like am i actually here like did i actually end up here like can i trust on on this right and that is i think the part of the integration of of this understanding so that's actually why our firm is is good that's why uh, our company is called ego death capital right because that journey that you understand that you're on and everybody's on is mm. actually a um, a journey of kind of that awareness to where we go onto the uh, onto this, and it changes a whole bunch of things. That yeah. in, in, in the, and a lot of times the biggest thing inhibiting our ability to see it is our is our own ego. We can't yeah. be wrong, right? We can't be our view. Our view of that reality is right. Mm. Yeah. So, what educational strategies do you believe are most effective? To help people um, overcome misconceptions and and that resistance. So so I would say that uh, that first off, people are more open to uh, 
changing their beliefs. If they believe you're likable or you, you're honest, you have their back, they can be themselves, right? And, and you're not trying to change them. You're just, have you thought about this? Have you thought it? And so I, I just find like, I, I had to ask myself, why do I care so much if somebody doesn't believe this? Right. Eventually they will, but, but, but why do I care? And, 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 um, some of that would be, I would tell myself, um, well, I, I care because I want to help them. But the truth deeper under that is you care, you cared because you wanted to be right. And I think you get, you're Perhaps, finding, a, yeah. I think, I think so the, the decomposing those things, because mm -hmm. if you wanted to help them, right, if it was just, and, and if you wanted to help them, nothing they said would trigger you. Nothing. Yeah. If, if you wanted to be right, everything they said would trigger you and you would push away further. Yeah, it's funny. When I look at myself, I, I, I am definitely triggered sometimes, but it's more, it's more about the content, I think, or that's what I say to myself, right? That's, like, that's actually I, why these, that's, that's why I brought these are really <laughs> deep, deep questions. They're yeah. deep questions, not for everybody else. They're deep questions mm -hmm. for our, ourselves. And as we, as, as we come into, to kind of being a better version of ourselves, that travels well. Cause we, cause we had to, cause we had to make the same mistakes to get there. hundred percent. Yeah. All right. So to wrap up, you just mentioned this article is about four ish years, three, three, four ish years old. Where are we now? Like on the time scale in terms of, of the prediction you made and, and what would, would, would happen? Of course we are in this journey, but like what? how, how do you view that now? I think we've talked a lot about this. The journey, the time frame is determined by how many people start to have the conversation we're having right now and move more yeah. of their energy into the new system. If yeah. what what that is juxtaposed against is most people won't. Why do I know most people won't? Because if you look at places like Venezuela that has currency devaluation, then another currency devaluation, then another one, most people there stay locked in that system, thinking there's a different mm -hmm. leader that can help them. Or yeah. Turkey, same thing, or Egypt, same thing, or name any countries. Mo why do, why haven't they moved their energy? And you can see yeah. what what ends up happening is fear paralyzes people, and and it drives them to think create an enemy or a, or a populist leader that will 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 drive a ch uh, change, and it actually tends it tends to consolidate more. So. We, if you understand human nature and if you just look around the world, then you realize this is probably going to play out for a long time and it's going to be bumpy along the way, mm -hmm. but it, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to, it, it, your individual energy, every single person listening to this podcast, their individual energy matters because we are all connected. Yeah. Well, that's a great hopeful end to this conversation. Thanks <laughs> so much. I uh, I think this uh, this uh, I'm gonna listen back, and I think there will be some moments where where I think like okay, there there are still some things I'd love to work on for myself, and I think that's uh, that's uh, that's a great thing to discover in uh, in a conversation like this. So thanks so much. I'm gonna link to uh, the article, of course, in the show notes for everyone to uh, to read it. And uh, yeah, let's stay in touch, and I'll see you in Madeira. Awesome. Look forward to it. Awesome, man. Cheers. Thanks so much. Right, see ya. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, it would be amazing if you could rate, review, and subscribe on the podcast platform of your choice. It will help us educate more millennials on the importance of Bitcoin. You can follow and connect with me on Twitter. I'm Bramke. That's at B-R-A-M-K. And if you are or know someone who has an interesting perspective on Bitcoin that's worth sharing, hit me up. I read and reply to every single message. I appreciate your support and hope you'll be here for the next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thank you